Look, everybody knows that Smeargle is only good for one reason, and it's definitely not its stats. It has base 20 offenses, and the only thing decent about it is 75 speed, which still kind of sucks. But Smeargle is a god because it can learn any move due to sketch, including signature moves. To push this little Bob Ross doggo to the absolute limit, we can use Shell Smash to double our attack and speed, but even then, that base 20 attack doesn't go far. The true sauce is thanks to this little mouse family and their signature move Population Bomb. This is a 20 base power move that hits 10 times, making it 200 power. Smeargle's ability is Technician though, so we actually get a 50% boost, making this 300 power before stab. We can use Power Trip to hit Ghost Types, which gets plus 20 power for each of our stat boosts, and Smeargle can be an absolute game breaker if it gets to set up on you. Alright, what if Smeargle said, I'm gonna paint you like one of my French girls, except the French girl was a mouse hold and he's only doing it for the population bomb. There's a lot of shenanigans you can get up to when it comes to Smeargle in general, but this one is the most fun, especially if you want to see the world burn. I love me some goofy Pokemon doing some weird stuff, and if you're into that kind of thing as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. So, from the team preview, I noticed they have a Vikavolt, and I do not want Sticky Web set up on my side. So, I decided to lead off with the Smeargle, mostly just so I could spore the Vikavolt, but instead, I met with this floppy fella, and the Mian Shao lead is a bit unfortunate. I am, of course, not Focus Ash on the Smeargle, so I gotta get my little painty dog ass out of here. And I decide, uh, I'm actually just gonna go into the Salamence. I can get a nice little Intimidate here. I imagine all of these things to be like a Choice Scarf. Hey, kind of just a fast U-turn lead. So I can get that Intimidate. Turns out they actually go for the Fake Out. And that's actually really nice to know because Scarf Mian Shao is scary. So at this point, I figure I'm just going to go for a Hurricane. I imagine they probably switch. But the Hurricane's going to do some pretty good damage to whatever they're going to go into. And a lot of the time, people expect the Salamence to be like a Dragon Dance physical set. So they actually bring in the Aloma Mola. And judging by the damage, this thing is probably physically defensive. I'm able to do about half with that Hurricane. But then the big fish is like, hey, actually, I'm going to need you to get the hell out of here. I get red carded and drawn into a random teammate, which is going to be the Quagsire, which actually isn't horrible here because I'm actually a water absorbed Quagsire. This is going to allow me a nice little opportunity to uh, get a toxic on this thing. This fish, these things never die, and they're up there on my list of Pokemon that I hate playing against because of Regenerator, and it's just so bulky. And Exhibit A, it goes for the wish. So... Quagsire says, how about instead you wish upon this poison? I do get the toxic off, which is amazing. And while this thing does have the wish up, there's kind of not really a whole lot it can do to the Quagsire here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take this opportunity just to go ahead and set up some hazards as they actually end up going for the Scald. Of course I am water absorbed, so I soak up the hot water, it just warms the boy up and I am able to get the Stealth Rock up for free. So what's actually kind of funny is I've been running unaware Quagsire <laughs> on a lot of teams and I literally just switched over to water absorb because it, uh, red card unaware Quagsire is nice, but it seemed like I was just always needing a water absorb. So they go for the Skull just to test it out and it doesn't work out too well for them. So that is perfect. This now allows me to just go for a nice little layer of spikes as they realize the yeah, Alamomola has no business staying in here. They do go into the Vicavolt. So this little fella over here has a couple different options that it could be ran. So a lot of the time people are going with like a, a sticky web lead. Now I didn't see it as the lead, so I'm kind of worried that it's going to be maybe like a specs variant, but then it actually has leftovers and I'm like, you know what, this thing is for sure going to try to make it all sticky over here and that could be bad because I do not have a rapid spinner. So worst case scenario, they actually go for something like an energy ball versus the quagsire, which is a possibility, but I decide, you know what, it seems likely they're going to want to set up the sticky web. So before that comes in, I actually decide to switch right into Smeargle. I come in and they do sticky web, which is perfect because I touch down right before that is able to hit. And at this point, we are not hindered with our speed here. So Smeargle is actually in a pretty good position here, generally in this team matchup, but also just versus this Vikavolt, I can go right for a nice little spore. And the only grass type they have to be able to block a spore would be the Shaman. So I'm really hoping they don't switch into that. Turns out, they're actually going to bring in the Mian Shao, which is perfect. This thing comes in unsuspecting, takes some spikes and some stealth rock, which is nice. But more importantly, I am able to put it to sleep with that spore. And uh, it is time. Smeargle is fully ready at this point to uh, start doing some absolute nonsense. So I'm going to just go right for the Shell Smash. Um, they are guaranteed to take a turn of sleep there, but instead they actually end up switching. And they're now going to bring in the Shaman. So just a little bit too late on the Shaman Hedgehog comes in saying... What's going on over here? I heard I was I heard I was needed. Now it takes some hazard damage, but it's almost too late. I'm able to go for the shell smash and listen, Shaman, I hope you're ready to pay some child support, buddy. Because it is about 
to rain little baby Smeargles all over the damn place. I get a nice little plus two to attack and speed. And with that, I am able to not only outspeed the Shaman, but the stab population bomb being able to hit 10 times is gonna go ahead and absolutely destroy the little fella. Now it turns out they actually turned their switch off before the third population bomb even hits. And uh, they just, they were not having any of that. It does actually finish off the Smeargle, of course, with even a still left, still a couple left in the chamber, but <laughs> but he was literally like, I am not, I'm not playing against this. And honestly, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. So that's going to do it for that one. But you already know we came prepped out here. We have another match and I am determined to let this Smeargle pop off even more. They call her the janitor because she be sweeping out here. And it looks like we have an interesting matchup here. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Star Raptor, which is scary. And I am going to lead with the Quagsire. Just because I was looking at the matchup, I kind of figured maybe they go something like Empoleon or even, you know, Rotom Wash and try to get a Volt Switch pivot. But uh, Staraptor comes out here and just starts Brave Burden all crazy right from the start. That does a ton of damage, not only to me actually, but also to them because of that recoil and also the Rocky Helmet. This thing's going to be sitting at uh, about half HP, which is honestly pretty good because now setting up my Stealth Rock, this thing does not have the option to switch in very many more times. That is the problem with Staraptor, while it can deal is a ton of damage. The longevity is is not really there. So at this point, I've seen how much damage that Brave Bird did, and considering I'm a physically defensive Quagsire, that means that thing is definitely choice banned. And uh, there's pretty much nothing scarier than a choice banned Reckless Star Raptor. But they actually decide to switch out here. It's not really worthwhile taking another Rocky Helmet chip, just because then I believe it would knock them down to range where they die from Stealth Rock. So I take this opportunity to sprinkle some spikes over there as in comes the Umbreon. So we see Leftovers Umbreon. This thing is definitely just going to be an absolute menace. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for a Toxic. I would love to get this thing poisoned. Synchronize doesn't matter for me at this point. Quagsire is hanging on by a thread and it's slow. I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to get a Toxic, but instead they do finish me with the foul play. So I'm kind of fine with that. I got some good chip on Staraptor. I also was able to set up both Stealth Rock and Spikes, and with the threat of a Torterra on their side, Quagsire is not a great wall in this position. So, I now get a nice little revenge switch, and as I decide to go into Spirit Tomb, pretty much immediately as I did this, I realized this is actually a bad idea. This thing surely has Toxic, and that's kind of the one thing that's going to stop me from like fully setting up Combines, and I'm like, you know, maybe they don't have Toxic. Yep, they definitely... <laughs> are gonna go for the toxic there and that kind of ruins the spirit tomb setup especially just because my only damage was to hit this thing with a d dark pulse anyway i don't know i look at the freaking umbreon i'm like i could set up on this i cannot and as i go for that combine there i'm like yeah i'm gonna need a bunch more of those plan was basically to try to get whittled down. i know this thing can't really hit me in return and i can pain split and look moral of the story it is a bad idea don't do it so i figure since i'm already poisoned at this point i can actually just go for a will-o-wisp which should be kind of nice and just getting some chip here. It can't synchronize me because I'm poisoned, but uh, Will-O-Wisp actually would have been a super clutch play to try to get off before they poisoned me because Spirit Tomb obviously doesn't care about being burnt, but uh, Umbreon, he kind of cares a little bit. So I'm able to get that burn there and I got to figure out a way around this Umbreon and these things are just an absolute pain in the ass pretty much all the time. I, <laughs> I swear, Umbreon is such a cool Pokemon, but it's again, one of the Pokemon I dread playing against. So Spirit Tomb is over here taking some chip damage from the poison and we're in a spot here where this is a fight that it, this is an uphill fight. It always is against a damn Umbreon and uh, I'm just gonna switch my little ghostly ass out of here. Now the problem about this thing specifically is that I don't really have a whole lot to do to it. What I can do is go into the Whimsicott. I bring in the 50% cotton, try to deliver 100% of these hands and as it goes for the Protect, it reveals that it is, in fact, going to be just a toxic stalling Umbreon, which is the most fun thing to play and play against. But um, the bad news about Whimsicott in this matchup is that I cannot use my Prankster moves, meaning the Leech Seed along with the Encore, which would be super nice. But of course, this thing being Dark type, uh, Prankster does not work there. So what I can do at least is just throw the freaking moon at this thing, hit it for some super effective damage, and I believe unless its final slot is going to be Wish, we're in a bad spot. But it actually shows Yawn. So we've seen Foul Play, Yawn Protect, and Toxic. So that means this thing does not have reliable recovery, and I now just need to try to get as much damn chip on this thing as possible. At least the uh, it burns help and it burns doing its part, pretty much doing nothing, but that's fine. And being yawned is, again, extremely annoying because I am just literally forced to switch here. I can't afford for Whimsicott to be put to sleep. So I have to switch and I decide, you know what? Hold on a second. Smeargle can come in here. 
and I can try to make some Smeargle stuff happen. So they actually do go for the protect there just to ensure that I fall asleep. And in this situation, there's a few things that can happen. We know that it can't do much with foul play. It can potentially go for a yawn, which would be worst case scenario, or a toxic. If I'm them, I probably click toxic here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bank on that. Try to go for the shell smash here and just smash the absolute living hell out of my non-existent shell. So I'm able to get that off and I'm like, okay, here's the situation. Just go ahead and click the toxic and then it is time for Smeargle to start going crazy. So I get all my boosts under the sun, and they do go for that Toxic, which is fantastic. It's not super ideal because that's gonna limit what Smeargle can do, being poisoned, but in this situation with that Shell Smash, a Population Bomb should be able uh, to finish this thing off. So as it's just been sitting there hovering at friggin' half HP, looking like an unlucky black cat, I am now in a spot where, again, we're about to start raining babies all over the place, and it is time to take shelter because the population bomb is about to go off. And uh, I consider going for a second, second shell smash, but I'm like, no, no, no. I just, it, I'm starting to bomb out here. I'm going for it. And uh, we absolutely just destroy him with some little babies. And that is going to kill the Umbreon. So that is satisfying to see that thing gone. And at this point, we're in a pretty decent spot with the Smeargle. There's a few bad situations that can happen to us, but we're going to ride this Smeargle train until the freaking wheels fall off. So... What they decide to do is they're actually going to end up bringing in the Infernape. So, Ape comes in in this situation. While I am faster, it does have the it does threaten me with the priority mock punch. So it takes some good stealth rock and spikes. And at this point, I'm like, well, I can't really afford to be mock punched, but it's fine. I have the Terra Ghost, and I'm just going to go ahead and bust that out because turning Ghost type is going to be able to punch right through me. And once again, I'm able to throw a population bomb at it. So I put the Ghost on my head. And we are ready for all forms of punching. Yeah, I guess other than the not fighting types. But I actually outspeed. They do not go for the mock punch, surprisingly. And the population bomb is just going to be enough uh, to knock it out. I still keep in five in the chamber out here. Did that only hit five times? We are out here four times. Let freaking Smeargle is out of control out here with that insane <laughs> attack stat our, our buddy's got. So I go for that Terra Ghost on this situation, which doesn't end up being needed. But it's fine. It was definitely... Um, the only thing that threatened me there was the mock punch. So now they can go into the Empoleon. So in this situation, I mean, kind of a bad spot because Population Bomb is not quite going to be enough to knock this thing out. So what I decide is I, I can actually just go for the Spore. Uh, nothing is asleep at this point. I can just Spore him and I say, no, 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 it's, it is nap time for you. Now, I am on a bit of a timer, of course, because uh, of that Toxic. And it's going to start racking up pretty quick, which is scary but we still have some some smear gold gas in the tank over here what i need to do is essentially just population bomb this thing twice now if it stays asleep for one more turn Smeargle is absolutely eaten. So I go for this population bomb, of course, uh, it does resist it. And uh, luckily though, hitting 10 times, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna definitely require at least a band-aid or two. And that's exactly what happens. It actually almost is enough to knock this thing out. Shout out to the wide lens for allowing us not to miss. Unfortunately, however, they actually do wake up and the first turn wake up or second turn is going to allow me to be finished off by a surf. So that is unfortunate. Smeargle gets a little bit a little, get, a little bit stopped right there, but honestly, it's mostly fine. I was able to take care of the ape. I got a huge amount of chip on the uh, on the Empoleon and also took care of the Umbreon. So we're feeling pretty good as now I can just go into the Jirachi. And ordinarily, Jirachi can't really hit this thing, but I do have enough chip on it to the point where um, either of my stabs should be able to knock it out. And honestly, Scarf Jirachi is... I, I was really cooking when I made this team because this is an absolute menace of a team just because... Scarf Jirachi with Serene Grace is just out here flinching everything, and <laughs> it is evil, but it is also fun. So, what they decide to do here is they're going to bring back in the Star After, and we know that this thing is actually Choice Banned. So, here's the situation. They are down to three Mons left. They have the Star Raptor, they have the Torterra in the back, along with a Rotom Wash. So, in this spot, I know that I actually outspeed this thing, and as I'm looking at it, though, I could finish it off with the Zen Headbutt, or... Knowing that their best damage, or pretty much only damage they can do, would be close combat on the Jirachi, I actually decided to switch into the Spirit Tomb here. Mostly just because, as they do go for this close combat, goes right through me. Um, I'm in a spot now where if Torterra comes in, I should be able to take an attack if it doesn't have a Shell Smash set up, and then be able to go for the Will-O-Wisp. I'm mainly, honestly, just worried about the Torterra in the back being able to sweep me. So, 
Uh, with this thing being locked into the close combat here, I can kind of um, just freely go for the Will-O-Wisp on whatever they want to switch into, but they actually realize they probably cannot come in on the Stealth Rock anyway, so they actually just, they actually just close combat through me once again as they are locked into that with that Choice Band. That allows me to burn them, but honestly that's kind of mostly unfortunate for me just because that's going to require just more turns of this Toxic to stack up, and I'm getting to a point where I'm like, well damn it, I might not be able to uh, to stop the Torterra if that's the route they want to go. So I take some more poison, this thing takes its burn, and I'm like, damn it, I was really hoping they switch into Torterra, or, e or even just the Rotom Wash there would have been fine, but now I'm just like, okay, no more playing around out here, I'm gonna go for the Dark Pulse. I, I get CC'd through once again, and uh, the Dark Pulse does, fin does finish off the Staraptor. So that thing being out of the way is amazing. It is always just an absolute late game menace, especially uh, with the Choice Band. It is extremely fast and uh, is, able to hit like literally just so hard even with close combat it's not able to uh, take recoil so that makes it scary but uh, at this point spirit tomb is chilling at about half and they have two options to go into and they're actually going to end up switching into the rotom here which is fine but i know that i can probably take at least maybe one hydro pump here is kind of best case scenario and i either get a dark pulse with some chip or i can actually potentially pain split if i live so i'm like you know what it's time to start splitting this pain, baby. They go for the Hydro Pump, which I am just barely able to live, which is extremely satisfying because now I can go for that pain split and heal myself and then get the uh, the damage off on the freaking washing machine over there. So uh, that thing's chilling at about half. I'm also hanging out at about half, but the poison is kind of a surefire way to ensure that Spirit Tomb isn't as much of a dick as it could be because I am uh, starting, to, starting to rack it up quite a bit and also... At this point, the only thing that actually knocks me out, I think, is another Hydro Pump. So they do actually connect on another one. Buddy's two for two out here. Gotta certainly go buy a damn lotto ticket. And that does take care of the Spirit Tomb. So now, I am still worried about the Torterra in the back. The thing, any Mon with a Shell Smash potential is very scary. And uh, I need to ensure that thing isn't able to get it up. So I'm actually just going to go into the Whimsicott here. Just because I know that, you know, I can probably live anything this thing wants to throw at me and a Giga Drain probably finishes it, but it actually lives the Giga Drain, which is freaking annoying because now I get paralyzed. The the late game T-Wave on the Whimsicott is a bummer because I wanted to go into the Whimsicott here mostly just because uh, if their final mon being Torterra comes in, it can just Shell Smash and then I can Encore it into that Shell Smash to kind of solidify their game. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, Para kind of kind of ruins that plan a little bit if I get the full Para, you know, on that Shell Smash. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make a play here. I'm gonna decide to switch into the Salamence, thinking maybe they actually go into Torterra and Intimidate would be really nice on it. But there's pretty much no reason to switch. But also Salamence has a pretty decent, you know, middle ground play switch in here just because a Hydro Pump does nothing. They also connect on another Hydro Pump. So I want I want whatever the hell Buddy's feeding this Rotom, but. After some leftover recovery, as I'm looking at it here, I'm like, okay, well, a Draco Meteor kills, but I can't be minus two special attack versus Torterra. So I go for the Flamethrower thinking, surely that kills, but it literally lives on one HP. This is an absolute clusterfuck of a matchup against this Rotom, and it, I hate this tiny-ass little washing... Why does Rotom look like it's literally three inches bigger? It's the tiniest washing machine of all time. What, how, what size loads are you putting into this thing? Pause. Anyway, <laughs> I, get, I now get paralyzed with the Salamence, and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? This, I, nothing else I can really do, I'm just gonna go for another Flamethrower. And they connect on another Hydro Pump, which is honestly just impressive at this point. But, finally, the last Flamethrower does do it. That's kind of the downfall of going into Mence there. I, I was like, okay, well, I kind of was forced to go for a not very effective attack, and you hate to see it. So the final Pokemon is gonna be the Torterra here, and what we do not want is the Shell Smash, and that would be not ideal. So here's the thing, I decide, I'm going to go into the Whimsicotton here, just because surely their win condition here would be going for the Shell Smash. It would allow them to outspeed stuff, and that thing can be quite scary. So bringing in Whimsicott on a Shell Smash will allow me to then I, at least try for an Encore through the Para and make sure that they're stuck in that. So they're actually going to go ahead and commit their Terra here. They're actually going to go Terra Rock, which is going to put a little house on top, of, on top of the freaking tree over there, looking ridiculous. Uh, but that also is now going to actually boost the Rock Blast stab, which they go for the Rock Blast over the Shell Smash, which is honestly good for me, and it actually ends up missing. So I'm like, hey, that's actually pretty good. Now, my best position in this spot would be just go for the Encore, just to guarantee that you're stuck and going for Rock Blast. I can deal with Rock Blasts, 
What I cannot deal with is if you're smashed, so that's fine. Now they're stuck in Rock Blast with that Terra extra stab. Um, even with the loaded dice, it's going to be able to roll for at least four hits. Potentially five can knock me out here. And uh, honestly, I'm kind of hoping for the knockout just because then I can just get in a revenge switch. But they get the four. It doesn't end up uh, taking care of me. And now I can just let it outspeed me because I am paralyzed. And one more Rock Blast does connect to finish off the Whimsicott. But I did kind of what I needed to do with that Encore. It at least guaranteed that uh, there's going to be no bullshit coming from this turtle. And that should be also good because I do still have the Jirachi in the back who, you know, resists the Rock Blast even with that stab. You're not going to be able to do much to my little Steel Star Boy. So, Sirachi comes in feeling extra spicy out here and I can't outspeed with that Scarf and the Iron Head is actually going to get the flinch because that is what we do out here with this head. We be flinching fools and Jirachi is hilarious. Now, one more Iron Head does finish it off and that is going to be the end of the game. So, honestly, that was kind of a... A cluster of a battle there, and some bad plays and some good plays, and overall just kind of a ridiculous and fun match. So I thought that was <laughs> that was just a good one. We love a full team effort battle, and that took pretty much everything. Shout out to the pancakes. Now let's go ahead and get into. We got a bonus battle for you because this Smeargle is ridiculous, and we are determined. So this is actually a really good match here, and uh, it comes kind of right down to it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, first of all, got to give a shout out to Liquor Jim because he got a great username and also a pretty cool looking team over here. So I'm going to lead off with the Quagsire because it does look like a solid lead here as they're going to lead off with the Lycan Rock. I imagine we're just going to go ahead and compare sizes of Stealth Rocks, but instead, like a dick, it actually just goes for the taunt. I'm like, hey man, I thought we had an agreement here. I thought we were laying down some rocks, but it turns out we are in fact not. But honestly, that's fine because I figured this thing can't really do too much to me. And I'm like, I, I can actually just hit pretty hard with an Earthquake here. Likely knock it down to a Focus Sash as they do set up the Stealth Rock over their own. So I'm able to go for that Earthquake. And of course, this thing is going to be Focus Sash. Now, I decided at this point I should probably get out of here with the Quagsire because I kind of expect this thing to switch. Uh, so I actually decided to go into the Whimsicott. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have gone Spiritomb because a lot of the time these things are going to likely like Endeavor at 1 HP and then Accelerock, but... This one actually is going to go for the reversal. At 1 HP, has maximum power. Luckily, we are able to resist that, which is nice. Does a bunch of damage, and I do actually red card that thing out of there. So, they are forced to switch into a random teammate. And the good news about getting Lycanroc out was kind of the plan was being able to get my Stealth Rock up later. It can no longer switch in if I can get the hazard up. But, that actually draws in the freaking Lapras. And against my little Grass type ass, I should probably get out of here because an Ice Shard is kind of what this thing's more than likely going to do here if it's going to be that type of Lapras. It could be potentially Dragon Dance, it could be a special variant, but a lot of the time it's going to have that Ice Shard support. So I'm actually just going to go right back into Quagsire as they do go for that Ice Shard, and I'm like, you know, this is actually perfect. I want to be able to get my Stealth Rock back up. It's going to guarantee that Lycan Rock is going to be Lycan dead. So they actually end up going for the Curse with the Lapras, which is honestly... Pretty crazy. Most of the time you see like a Dragon Dance setup if it's going to be a setup Lapras. But I actually fuck with the curse set heavy because this thing now gets a plus one to attack and uh, defense. And while it's not fast, it's not fast anyway. And it does still have that priority with the Ice Shard. So I figure my best bet in slowly whittling this thing down is just going to be able to get that Toxic off. Which uh, is nice. It does connect. And now at least while this thing is going to be a freaking defensive beast... I'm going to get some, some good damage when that Toxic starts to rack up, as they actually go for a second Curse. And I don't know what exactly moveset this thing's working with, but I imagine it's probably got some Water-type coverage, and then kind of a question mark of what else this thing's working with. So, I know that Quagsire is not going to be able to do a whole lot here. So, I'm going to switch this thing out, and I decide to go Spiritomb. Spiritomb on this team kind of fills the role of, like, the guy that can switch into shit. So, I'm like, you know, this is fine. I can bring this thing in. And even at plus two, I should probably be able to take attacks here and then potentially start to whittle it down. It actually reveals it's going to go for the body press. I'm not going to lie, I did not expect the body press, but I look like a genius coming in on that with the ghost type. So this moveset is actually, this thing goes crazy. The curse body press set, so the defensive boosts are going to boost up that body press. Then it has priority with the ice shard, and I'm like, holy hell, the only thing that could actually be bad for me in this situation is one thing, and you're going to see in a moment. So... I go for the Dark Pulse there as they go for another Curse. And if you click Curse there in, in that situation, there's only one thing that means, and that 
means that this thing is going to be carrying freaking rest. Now, the reason why I kind of suspect that is because we haven't seen an item on it, as leftovers kind of seems optimal. Now I'm feeling like it's a freaking rest with a chesto berry, and I'm going to get my ass resto chestoed on, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for a dark pulse. Maybe I flinch. I do not, and now Lapras just takes a freaking knock, Loch Ness-sized nap on the battlefield, and that... <laughs> is actually wildly unfortunate. I'm out here struggling against these defensive mons and Spiritomb is not the guy to do it because it gets back to full. This thing now has, what, like three curses and it gets to wake up because of that Chesto Berry. And I'm like, oh shit, this is actually getting a little bit out of hand here with this freaking Lapras. So uh, I decide, you know what, I'm gonna go for a Will-O-Wisp. I can surely at least take a few Ice Shards here. And that actually doesn't even do a lot to me. This Spiritomb is about defensive as tits and we are handling that. But of course I missed the Will-O-Wisp because they don't call it Willow Miss for freaking nothing. Of course, getting the burn there isn't the most ideal situation, just because we've seen the rest already, but at least without the Chesto Berry, I'm gonna find a way around this damn Lapras if my life depends on it. So, I do connect on the will wisp this time, and we are sitting at about half HP, and kind of the one of the potential goal situations in this is if Spiritomb does get knocked down low enough, I can Pain Split, get some health back, knock them down, and we're in it for the freaking long haul versus this Lapras. I, shout out to the moveset though. This is actually, I have not considered the, the cursed Lapras. But I am do not want to sit here with these two Pokemon. So I'm like, I'm actually just going to switch into Whimsicott. I really wish that I had uh, my red card or just the ability to live an Ice Shard. I basically go Whimsicott just as a sack here. Um, but they actually curse. So they're going to fully set up this Lapras. They are fully invested in this Lapras at this point. This thing has got to be the most defensive ass Loch Ness fella on this side of the Mississippi, and it also has some pretty good attack even with that burn. So, uh, obviously an Ice Shard kills here, but with Prankster, I have a higher priority bracket, and I'm able to get up that Leech Seed just before I go down. So I'm like, okay, at least you're going to be taking burn, you're going to be taking Leech Seed, and we are trying to make this Lapras' life as miserable as possible, and uh, that's exactly what happened. So I get the Leech Seed off, I do now die to that Ice Shard, and of course no one's there to be sapping it on this turn, but... Now I can switch into whatever I like, and I'm like, okay, I, I really don't have much to hit this thing on the special side, but what I do have is this annoying ass Jirachi. I know that I can, at least it can't hit me for super effective damage, and it's burnt where the body press actually is just going to use the defense. So it's, this is, it's scary. This Lapras is a problem, but <laughs> Jirachi can go for the Iron Head, of course. I do get the flinch. It's, like a, it's almost a 50% chance every time to get that flinch. And also, with that Leech Seed and the Burn, the plan is just to whittle this thing down literally as much as possible and not allow it to rest. That's These are the goals, and there's not a whole lot else I can do. So, I considered going for the trick to give this thing the Choice Scarf, is why I initially brought in Jirachi, but then I was like, you know, what sounds even more fun is to just flinch a whole bunch. And uh, it kind of worked out, because they actually do end up switching. They realize they're probably not going to get super far with the Lapras there as it's going to be a couple hits to be even able to knock me out. So they bring in the Lycanroc who does just die to the Stealth Rock damage, which is great. And I Iron Head the air. So that's pretty nice, except for the fact that now they're going to switch into whatever they like. Now Trevenant comes in and these things are relatively bulky enough to be able to take a hit. So I'm like, whatever. I, I'm not really afraid of a Poltergeist. This is fine. I go for an Iron Head and we get the flinch. Baby Jirachi doing what we do best. And most of the time, I'm like, should I switch here or should I just try for the flinch? I just try for the flinch because that's what freaking Rachi's here for. And I got I honestly feel bad. I do apologize. But it's business, baby. So <laughs> Trevenant goes down, which is great. And I am definitely locked into the Iron Head here. As in comes the Jolteon. And I just do, probably don't want to be Iron Heading the old Jolt. So I'm actually just going to switch out here. Scarf Jirachi in the back. Uh, it does feel pretty nice. So I can actually get a pretty free switch into the Quagsire here, even though uh, their move of choice is probably going to be the Shadow Ball. It turns out they actually go for the Volt Switch. So Quagsire comes in and he says, no, 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 you will not be Volt Switching today, my friend. So one of the problems with this Quagsire is that I've opted for spikes over oh, any water coverage like Surf. So I'm forced to go for the Earthquake here, and I kind of, my worst fear was that the freaking Flygon switches in here, and it does. So, as an Earthquake, this thing's floating above it, and Flygon is actually in a position where, depending on what type of Flygon this is, I could be in a bad spot. I, worst case is that it's going to be a Dragon Dance variant, so expecting that, I actually decide to switch into the Salamence, just to be able to get an Intimidate, ensure that the attack stays, uh, stays at neutral range, and uh, I do come in and scare him a little bit with the Salamence, but they actually go for the U-turn. That kind of leads me to believe it's probably a Scarf Flygon, 
Um, most of the time, Flygons are going to be Scarf, but these days you're seeing a lot of Dragon Dance variants running around and you just never know. So, as the U-turn happens, now they're able to bring back in the Lapras and uh, it takes all the chip from the nice little hazards. But I'm still kind of in danger from an Ice Shard, but then I'm like, this thing's burnt. I'm not, am I that afraid? I'm not that afraid. It doesn't do very much. Uh, I am able to take that nicely and then fire off a freaking Draco Meteor and that does kill the Lapras. So, good to see that thing gone. It was not able to you know, get the rest up, as that's kind of why I didn't switch there, because it was like a coin flip. It was like either they Ice Shard, or they go for a rest expecting me to switch, so my best play was just to Draco Meteor, um, but I kind of pay for it, because now they're able to go right back into the Flygon, and I'm like, hmm, I, at minus two special attack, I'm kind of in a spot where I'm a little bit spooked. I, I, I can't really afford to let this thing uh, go for a Dragon Dance. I kind of, I went for Flamethrower, as I almost expected them to go for like a Terra Steel, but they do not, and instead they just finish me off with the Dragon Claw, which is not a bad play at all, as uh, that takes care of the Salamence, which is a bit unfortunate. So kind of a misplay on my end. I was like, even at minus two, a Flamethrower will do a lot of chip here, and I know that it's probably a Scarf Flygon at this point, so I don't have to worry as much about the Dragon Dance. So, I go into Jirachi just because I know that I can take a Dragon Claw, and also we're both Scarf, so we actually have a Speed type base 100, and uh, I just go for the Zen Headbutt here. As they actually end up switching into the Jolteon, probably expecting the Iron Head. But the Zen Headbutt does the job just as well. But uh, I go for another one here as I'm able to outspeed with that Scarf and I freaking miss, which is amazing. And now this allows them to fire off the Shadow Ball. Brings me down to 17 HP. That does way more damage than I expected. I'm like, okay, I just outspeed, go for another one. But I miss another Zen Headbutt. I've missed two in a row at this point and that is unfortunate. But honestly, I probably kind of deserve it with the hacks that I get on the Strachi anyway, so... You hate to see it, but as they finish me off with the Shadow Ball, and as I'm also looking at it, that Jolteon did way too much damage with that Shadow Ball to not be choice spec. So I imagine this thing is locked into Shadow Ball with that spec, because it probably only is able to do like 60-ish percent to the, the Jirachi normally. So this actually opens the door for me to bring in the Smeargle, and Smeargle is ready. And all you need is a position here for me to be able to go for that Shell Smash. So they are forced to switch out the Jirachi, of course, because they're locked into the Shadow Ball, and they're now going to go into the Hitmonchan, and uh, I'm like, no, 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 you are gonna be put to sleep. I'm able to go for that Spore, and at this point, it does not burn the turn of sleep, so it's guaranteed that this thing now uh, has to stay asleep here. So what I need is a nice little Shell Smash here, and also, if I'm this Hitmonchan, I'm probably going for Mach Punches, but knowing, of course, that they stay asleep here, I don't quite need to commit the Terra, and I can just go for that nice little, uh, little Shell Smash action here, and this thing, the good thing about Smeargle is it's already actually pretty naturally um, naturally fast. It just doesn't have a whole lot of attack. But we be able to subsidize that shitty attack with the ability to hit everything 10 freaking times with the stab move in Population Bomb. So, uh, at one Shell Smash, I'm like, you know what? It's, I'm getting greedy out here. There's almost no reason not to. Uh, because surely this Hitmonchan wants to go for a Mach Punch. So, knowing that they have the chance to wake up here, I'm actually just going to go for the Terra Ghost. And we're going ghost like Danny Phantom out here. I'm, I'm honestly, like, if this thing wakes up and mock punches, it'd be the most satisfying thing ever. The late game Smeargle is about to show what we can do. So I go for the, the second Shell Smash. Honestly, Greedy, I probably didn't really need that, but I don't know exactly my calcs here, and I was like, it's kind of just the safest option. It actually isn't the safest option, because if they called that and went for something like a not a mock punch, I'm in a bad position, but it actually does just remain asleep, and uh, he's over there just bouncing around while sleeping, looking like freaking Groot over here with the boxing gloves, and at this point, it's time to it's time to start bombing. You know the drill at this point. I can go for that population bomb. I have 10 in the chamber. Only takes freaking three to knock out the Hitmonchan, and that is going to take care of it. So they did still have half their team left. They have the Hitmonchan and the two Mons left. So with two Shell Smashes, this Smeargle is running like freaking Usain Bolt out here, and we are not afraid of freaking Jolteon. It does come in and surprisingly actually lives the Stealth Rock with like one HP, but of course, uh, we are actually just still faster. I can go for that Population Bomb, only just bomb him one time because we're, we're nice, and that takes care of the Jolteon, and now, honestly, nothing can save you from the threat that is Population Bomb, Shell Smash, Smeargle. As they're able to go into the Flygon, this thing is sitting pretty healthy. Not quite healthy enough, to be able to uh, take a population bomb, but they're actually gonna go ahead and commit the Terra here. I'm thinking, oh damn, if it's Terra Steel, that's actually kinda bad, but it's actually just gonna be the Terra Ground. Uh, they basically just bust out the Terra to give this thing a bulk cut as a last ditch effort, cause maybe the drip will allow it to live, but I go for that population bomb. I'm able to actually do a huge chunk with every one of them at plus four attack, and that is gonna take care of the Flygon. So, 
you never you count yourself out until the Smeargle is gone because the freaking the population bomb Smeargle is here for blood and uh, we've got here we've done it so that's gonna be the end of the game uh, I thought that was just kind of an interesting match really cool team on on his end and I had a whole lot of fun with it this is just a goofy move set that is uh, just dumb but it's fun so thank you guys very much for watching Feral. hopefully uh, you guys stuck around for this longer video and if you did I love you and I'll catch you guys next time peace out